All right, welcome back to AP Economics or High School Economics. This is Dr. Kling, and I want to call today's talk Fiscal Policy with a Tax Function. And what, we're, what we could do, and we could do this forever, is gradually introduce more complications to the simple Keynesian model with these complications to try to make it more realistic. Um, so I'm going to just introduce one comp one complication to today, and that is we're going to instead of having before we had taxes equal to T's. So we and what's unrealistic about that is that it fixes taxes regardless of the level of output. But we know in the U.S. with things like income and payroll taxes that taxes depend on GDP. So this was before, and now we're going to say that taxes go up as GDP goes up. And so the simplest way to do that, the simplest tax function, would be to say that Taxes is equal to T naught plus T Y, so a slope and intercept. Graphically, we could draw it this way. So output and taxes, and this is zero. And if you think about things like our income tax, people who have no income actually get subsidies from the government. They, they in some sense, pay a negative tax. There's the, something called an earned income tax credit. And so the the tax function might look like something like this. So the point is that this T naught, the intercept, is probably a negative number. So when we make up an example, we'll put a negative number in there. Okay, so now we have our usual equations. We have our GDP identity, Y equals C plus I plus G. We have a consumption function, whoops, consumption equals C naught plus the marginal propensity to consume times disposable income, income minus taxes. But now we're going to have taxes T naught, so an intercept term and then a slope term, sort of a marginal propensity to tax of T, Y. So now we have three equations involving y, and so the strategy is going to be to plug this thing into here, and then when we've finished with that, we'll plug this into here, and then we'll be down to one equation. So let's just go through that. So the first step is to put this t into there, so we get c is equal to c naught plus c times y minus now I'll put this in parentheses T naught plus T Y. Um, okay, so maybe uh, let, let's spread this out a little more. Let's finish this up. Equals C naught plus C Y minus C T naught minus C little t times y. So all I did was I um, multiplied through by c uh, and uh, just simplified the, the whole expression. Okay, so now we have that. Again, all we're doing is simple algebra. And now we want to plug this this new consumption equation here back up into that equation. And we're going to get y is equal to c naught plus c y. I'm going to move this over here, this over to the left a little bit. So minus c t y minus c t naught plus i plus g. All right, so that's our that's our new 
y equation, now we have a couple of terms in y that we need to move over here. So we have y times 1 minus c, and when this comes over, it's going to have a plus sign because we're adding it. So we might want to verify that. So we have the marginal propensity to consume times the marginal propensity to tax entering with a plus sign over here is equal to c naught minus c t naught. So this is the marginal propensity to consume times the the uh, baseline tax, which we've said might be negative. So this t naught might be negative plus i plus g. And so we now have a new multiplier. So we have y is equal to 1 over 1 minus c plus ct times c naught minus c t naught plus i plus g. And so now fiscal policy could consist of raising government spending or a fiscal expansion if we're trying to increase GDP, would we, we could raise government spending, we could reduce the uh, tax intercept, or we could cut the marginal tax rate. So we now have three levers of fiscal policy. And um, let me just, I'll try to set up an example where we just look at one of them, the little t. So we'll start out with our baseline consumption of, let's say, 6, our baseline tax of minus 2. Remember, I was thinking of having a negative number there. Investment of, uh, let's say that's 4. Government spending of, I'll go with, with Four and we'll have a uh, tax rate of uh, let's say point two. All right, let's see what we get for y if we do that. Hopefully, we get get a positive number when we do that. Oh, I need a marginal propensity to consume. Let's let the marginal propensity to consume be uh, 0.5 again. All right, so y will equal then 1 over 1 minus 0.5 plus 0.1 times, now we have 6 minus 0.5 times minus 2 plus 4 plus 4. That's all wonderful. So it's equal to 1 over 0 0.6 times 14 plus 1 is 15. Um, and that's going to be about 25, right? Okay, so that would be our GDP. And now suppose we cut this tax rate, and we'll do a drastic tax cut. We'll cut that into in half. So we'll set set that equal to 0 0.1. So with t equals 0.1, then that what that'll change, that'll change this number here will now be 0.05, and then um, I guess that'll be it. Okay, so we have this 0.05 here. So instead of 1 over 0.6, it will be 1 over um, 
0.55. Is that right? And so let me calculate what that would be. Hold on a second. So that will be 20, 27.27. Uh, so that, that shows how cutting the tax rate would raise GDP. So there's a lot more you can play with in this model, and I'll, I'll give out some problems that'll, uh, that'll let you exercise this model. And see you next time.